Good morning. It's been a while. We all went camping and we've just been enjoying the outdoors a little bit. I have Sophia with me. She is the guest star. She loves it. So today I wanted to talk about the 100 after effects, signs and symptoms of sexual abuse. This has been the most popular subject on my channel because people just like me didn't know that there was so many after effects. And when I found this out, it was life changing for me because I could put together all the different problems that I had and point to where it came from, the sexual abuse. Just a quick note that um, I was sexually abused during the first 10 years of my life and I didn't remember that. And for the next eight years living at home, the sexual abuse continued, but it was the no touching sexual abuse. And so for the four, first 18 years, I was damaged. And all the after effects that I got was from that sexual abuse. And of the 100 after effects, I had 70. So that's a lot for one person to carry around and not know why. So I wanted to read the list to you. And um, I know that this is going to help many, many people because they say one out of three girls and one out of five boys are sexually abused by the time they're 18 years old. All my books have this information. I'm reading from the first one, Identifying and Healing Childhood Sexual Abuse. They're all on Amazon and Audible. And let's start here. Here's the list of after effects that I found so useful at the website sandf.org. And it says, the following are some common symptoms or after effects survivors experience. However, having some of these symptoms, symptoms does not necessarily mean you are a victim of sexual abuse. After each symptom, mark never, slightly, or definitely. Okay, the first section is under fear. And this one I had most every single one of them. I was one scared little girl. Fear of being alone, fear of the dark, fear of abandonment, fear of rejection, fear of change, fear of exposure, afraid to be touched, hugged, etc. Fear of intimacy, fear of being out of control, going crazy, fear of sexuality or sexual feelings. Unexplained fear of certain places such as parks, woods, closets, bedrooms, bathrooms, fear of pelvic exams, unexplained fears relating to own children, such as desperately fearing that your children may end up experiencing what you did, constant hovering over them, or at least feeling anxiety about them, particularly as they reach the age at which you were abused, fear that something bad will happen, catastrophizing, fear of certain persons. The next section is physical symptoms. I had a lot of these also. Gagging sensitivity, ignoring body signals such as pain, fatigue, hunger, etc. Hiding or protecting self by wearing baggy clothing, carrying extra weight in an effort to protect self. Dealing with physical illnesses that you suspect may in some way be associated. I had endometriosis, very, very bad. And I did read that there is a connection between sexual abuse and that problem. Feeling a real dislike of your own body. <coughs> the cat came. So Sophia is ready to play. Feeling a real dislike of your own body, trying to deny certain aspects of the way your body looks. Having numbness in certain parts of your body from time to time, especially areas that are used sexually. Muscle tension, headaches, backaches. 
unexplained gastrointestinal distress. The next section is mental symptoms. Once again, I had quite a few of these too. Eating disorders, bulimia, anorexia. I had, there's my honey, my great Pyrenees. She senses something is out there. I had anorexia. Feelings of being fat and or ugly, even when not. Body dysmorphic. Stealing, shoplifting. I never did any stealing or shoplifting. Compulsive and or addictive behavior. Eating, shopping, working, sex, smoking, drinking, etc. Self-destructive behavior, feeling self-hatred, even to the point of self-mutilation or self-destruction, suicidal thoughts, attempts. Hey baby, it's okay. Honey's taking care of it. I have a farm. I have lots of animals, as you can see. What I was gonna say on that one was that I did have the suicidal voices. And um, I have a series of videos. There's, uh, I believe, 36 different videos and it tells my story. And uh, there's two specific videos that talk about suicide. And I wrote a book on that topic. I, it started in the seventh grade for me and went all the way until I was 40. And that's when God took it away. Shutting down emotionally, detaching, rigidity, depression, anxiety, panic attacks. That was really bad, depression, anxiety, panic attacks. Control issues, need to be in control of self or others. That was me too. Feeling the need to be perfect in all aspects of life. Relationships, vocation, daily living. I was a perfectionist. Having a sense of overwhelming guilt, a feeling of always being wrong, especially in relationships. It sounds like talking with someone might help. The National Suicide Prevention <laughs> Lifeline offers free and confidential <laughs> emotional support. My watch just talked to me and it said, if you're feeling bad, there's a place I can call to get help. I'm being watched. I'm being followed by my Apple Watch. That was weird. Feeling a constant need to make up for being a bad person. Therefore, driving oneself to achieve in most areas of life. Having low self-esteem. Guilt. Shame. Having reoccurring, having reoccurring thoughts such as something's wrong with me. Definitely, I always do that. I was seductive, I wanted it, I am dirty and stained forever. I am alone and I exist to be taken advantage of. I am only good for sex, I deserve to be abused, I deserve only bad things. Free feeling crazy or different, very much so. Withdrawal and isolation, yes, I was housebound for years with this problem. Denial or minimization. Feeling confused or disoriented much of the time. Inability to deal with strong feelings. Fearing you will lose control over your emotions. Numb self to own feelings. Drugs, alcohol, food, staying too busy. I never took drugs, but the doctors I went to wanted to give them to me because they said there was no helping me drugs were my answer and they got me addicted to Xanax. That wasn't my answer. It was God. Feeling watched. Depersonalization. Feeling numb. Feeling separate from oneself in certain situations. Experiencing multiple personalities. I dealt with multiple personalities, but God healed it. Humorlessness or inappropriate humor, especially in fearful or, dif or difficult circumstances. Seeking peace and safety at any price. Having a general 
general feeling of hopelessness, both about yourself and life in general, feeling like you have no control over life's circumstances. Absolutely. I was feeling hopeless during my teens, 20s, 30s, until I received healing. Experiencing a deep and irrational fear of or hatred for some person who has not necessarily abused you, but could have. Feeling that you should be able to grow up and move beyond all these intrusive thoughts about your abuse, but you can't seem to do it. Well, it's hard to move on when you've got all this baggage that you're carrying around and you don't know why. Feeling envy of other people who have normal lives. I would always watch the happy people. It's like, how do you do that? How could you be so happy? You know, I'm miserable. Having difficulty in trusting one's own thought processes and feelings. Failure to see or take responsibility for actions and circumstances. Anger issues, such as fear of expressing anger, fearing that if you let go of your anger, you might do something dangerous or never be able to regain control. Constant anger, disproportionate anger. The next section is relationship issues. Do you see yourself in any of these? Boy, I sure can. Feeling like damaged goods, not worthy of others, of others' love. If married, feeling especially unworthy of a spouse's love. Having difficulty in accepting genuine acceptance, love, and caring from nearly everyone. Feeling that the other person must be right most of the time. Excessive nurturing of others while ignoring own needs or wants or a nurturing mother type for many people. Pattern of re-victimization. That I never did. I never hurt anyone. Praise God. Having difficulty in making commitments to others. Frequently clinging to people who seem to need you, even when they make you angry. Finding yourself mistreating your own children and not understanding why. Never did that either. Thank you, Jesus. Having difficulty in feeling emotionally close to your children or conversely being over-involved with or over-protective of them. I adored being a mom and um, I was a good mom. Having unexplained difficulty with things like bathing own children. When with your childhood family, feeling out of control, frightened, unimportant, angry, or depressed. I had a real hard time going into my parents' home once I moved away. It was just, um, I almost had a feeling of being haunted. There was so many memories, but I didn't know what they were. I didn't remember until I was 40, but there was just, it was so hard to walk into that home. Feeling a, feeling a need to protect your family from the knowledge of what happened to you. I told my family because I needed their support. Trust issues. Difficulty trusting anyone. Avoid intimacy for fear that if people really knew you, they would reject you. Frequently testing people who say they love you just to see if they really do. Trusting indiscriminately. Getting approval by performing, pleasing others, an overwhelming need to please others coupled with a self-image dependent upon how well you please others. Boundary issues, unable to confront, inability to say no or needing to do what others ask of you regardless of own feelings and needs. Believe you don't even have a right to your own feelings. The next section is sexual issues. Repressed, sexual, repressed sexuality, avoidance of sex, feeling sex is distasteful or disgusting, ashamed of sexual feelings. 
compulsive slash obsessive sex. Promiscuity, inability to say no, believe you're a sex object, only good for sex. Feeling that your value is primarily in your sexuality. Vaginismus, and that's vaginal contractions or painful sex. <coughs> giving sex to feel love, giving love to get sex. Difficulty distinguishing between the desire for intimacy and desire for sex. Unable to enjoy sex or certain parts of it. Having flashbacks during sex or confusing partner with abuser. Flashbacks were a problem and I didn't know what it meant. Spacing out during sex. Intrusive abuse, rape, or S&M images during sex, or inability to reach orgasm without these images. <clears throat> Confusion as to sexual identity. Sexual deviancy, addiction to pornography, flashers, obscene phone calls, etc. Victim becomes a perpetrator, abuser. Absolutely not. That was not a problem for me. Memory. This is a big ish area for me also. Memory gaps of early years. Like I said, the first 10 years of my life were blanked out. Flashbacks, feel, hear, smell, dream, etc. Certain events and not necessarily know the meaning. I had nightmares from the fifth grade until I was 42 years old, every night of being chased and killed and eaten. <clears throat> and I never knew why. Nightmare, nightmares of abuse incidents, being chased, etc. Unrealistic over-idealization of childhood or parents. Denial or events or their importance. Minimize or excuse abuse incidents. It wasn't that bad. Others had it worse. They couldn't help themselves, etc. Triggers, certain events, childbirth, seeing own abuser holding your child, your own child reaching age when your abuse began, your child reaching age of your abuser, etc. and trigger flashbacks, unexplained fears, or full memories. And the last section, you wanna go get the kitty, don't ya? Yeah, the kitty's laying right over there. Spiritual, inability to feel loved unconditionally and accepted by God. Anger toward God. <clears throat> I was angry at God for a long time because I thought he could have just made this not ever happen. But then I understood the reason that God gives people the choice of good or evil and my abusers chose evil but uh, in return God has done so much healing and so many miracles in me that anger is totally gone and will never come back difficulty trusting God spiritual emptiness tired of trying to please God blaming God for life's circumstances inability to give or receive forgiveness forgiveness was huge for me I didn't think I'd ever be able to do it, but I eventually did forgive my mom and dad. Insistence on earning salvation, yet feeling unworthy of God's favor or grace. That's the end of the article. Well, that's a lot to digest, but that just shows you how damaging sexual abuse can be for a person. And I received that when I was 65 years old. I was just about to sit down and write my first book. And I prayed and asked God, um, is there more information I need before I start? And he sent me to that site. And it was the first time in my life that I saw all the different after effects in one list that I could connect to 70 of those and know that all came from being abused. It was so important 
for me. Once I know the reason for why I have my problems, it's so much easier to come to terms with it. And one by one, when I turned to God, he took away one thing after another, after another. He first of all sent me to the best psychologist, Dr. John Nash, who helped me for two years. One year was, um, my diagnosis was agoraphobia. And um, he taught me so many tools in this group with other ladies to face my panic attacks and depression and all the different things we suffered from. And then six months after I was done with that group, the memories came of the abuse. And I was lucky enough to get a spot one-on-one -on -one with him for another year. He only took two people per year and I got to be one of them. And I cried that whole year dealing with all the problems that I saw. We worked extensively with my inner child. And um, my whole story is in, is in my six books. And um, the Reader's Digest version is on YouTube. So if you can relate to these things that I'm saying, or if you know somebody, I hope you'll tell them about my video. And um, I just hope you have a great day and God bless you. I hope you, I hope you like and subscribe and press the notification button and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.